to put word, words slightly into your mouth, you've already said that you don't think that the AGI thing is going to happen, the singularity is going to happen and it take over the world. But does, it, does this make you nervous at all? Because even with the level of technology that we have, I think there are kind of cultural challenges that yeah. we're going to face with the easy ability to recreate people and things and so on. Yeah, I think yeah. we should be worrying about that part. Right. I think the ability to do a fake version of Dave Farley, that's a real problem that we actually have already. You know, well, it's going to get worse in the next few years. And society needs to deal with that somehow. Worry about the singularity, I don't think helps with that. I think it distracts from the actual problems that we are actually going to face. Uh, will we have, I think, so I think. Uh, Singularity, I would assess as very unlikely in the next short time. But remember, my opinion about this is has very little to do with whether it happens or not. But I don't think it's very likely. You weren't sure whether you'd predict I, I a video it phones. A different so. category than the singularity, by the way. <laughs> you could easily have AGI and not have a singularity. Yeah. Um, after all, we already have lots of GIs and we don't have a singularity. I mean, you're a GI and I'm a GI. So if you stick an A before it, how does that automatically lead to? It does, though. So another thing I'd worry about, in addition to the fake uh, Dave Farley's, is the disruption to the labor market. I yeah. think that we're going to see a lot of jobs go away and new jobs created, of course. As uh, but. Um, those will be very different jobs. They're not jobs that are available to the people who are losing their jobs. That's the thing, you know, when people say, well, it's creative destruction and, you know, we'll lose millions of jobs, but we'll create even more millions of jobs. But the trouble is that the people who lost those millions of jobs can't take the new millions of jobs, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be lots of prompt engineering jobs, maybe, but now, the person who worked at a call center who now doesn't work at a call center isn't going to be able to be a prompt engineer. Yeah. Uh, unless it's like <clears throat> the 90s when uh, if you could write a line of PHP that could compile, you could get a job as a web developer. <laughs> <laughs> I am not exaggerating. <clears throat> that was kind of a disaster for the field as well, I would say. Yeah. So, 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 do, so, how how do you see the impact on professional software developers? Do, do, a tool that's going to use that that we're going to that we're going to use and will change a little bit the way in which we do what we do, or um, eliminating software development altogether? Where are you on that kind of spectrum? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> I'm in the middle of that spectrum, I suppose, because I think. Uh, it won't eliminate software development as a profession. Um, if they really do create AGI, then I suppose that you could have an AGI do your job or my job. Depending on how you define that, if you have a truly human capable thing, then by definition, it can do things, it can replace a human, any human, I guess. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think more likely that the higher level software people are going to have work for, you know, I'm looking 10 years out. I don't know what's going to happen 30 years from now. Uh, I, I probably won't be alive in 30 years and uh, no one can predict that far in the future. But 10 years is a time horizon where even though our prediction ability is poor, we have to do our best anyway, because we have to plan and, and uh, we have to make a choice about what we're going to do, right? So mm -hmm. when I say I think there's not going to be AGI, I don't really mean I've done some kind of scientific analysis and concluded that that's not what's going to happen. Although I do think from my general semi-layman's viewpoint. I don't think that's imminent. I don't think it's as straightforward as like, just make the LLM even bigger. You mm -hmm. know, when an LLM behaves 
at moments you have this eerie sense that it's intelligent. And it makes me think that that probably reflects some of how our minds work, maybe more than we like to think, that we have generators in our minds like that. But there are other components, I think. I think it's missing pieces. And I think that some of those pieces will start to come along and we'll get more capable things and maybe someday they'll have something you could truly call an AGI. I'll bet by that time they have better words for it than AGI. Yeah. They'll say, oh, yeah, I mean, early 21st century people had such a naive view of all this. But what we have now is these LLMs, and they're getting better, but also getting smaller. Like, you know, I don't think the whole future is... GPT-5, I think that yeah. the future will be a range. It's like, you know, look what insects can do with insect-sized brains, right? Mm -hmm. If we had the insect-level AI, think of the things we could do with that. Yeah, and um, we're already getting some of that with hardware and software on our phones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, our phones, <clears throat> like... These are going to seem awfully clunky, I think, in just a couple of years. And yeah. I mean like two, maybe one year, because yeah. the idea that I have to navigate to an app to do this and that, and I mm. can't just tell my phone what I want. Like yeah. GPT understands enough of what I want, what I mean, that I, I could have just pictured just talking to my phone and telling it what I want. Or this stupid, you know, um, Amazon Echo that yeah. I used to turn the lights on and off and find out what the weather is. Well, if that thing weren't so dumb, uh, you know, and I think that will happen, right? But yeah. but those are the things where you just say, yeah, you just take chat GPT and you in integrate it into some stuff. But now let's think about like, what about people like us who work on systems that have thousands of pieces and yeah, there's the aspect of the tools we use to do that work. Those, we already have at least a couple new tools to do that work with. We've got, you know, I, um, but I, I think the part that excites me the most is the components that we could create to incorporate into those systems. That could be mm -hmm. all different levels of language models and other kinds of AIs too, but for me, the language models are the most interesting thing. I mean, after yeah. all, right, DDD, I was saying, you know, it's about ubiquitous language. How cool mm -hmm. is it then that when we finally get AI that's worthy of that name, you know, and it turns out to be a language model? I, I yeah. think that's just uh, good luck. I don't, I'm not uh, saying there's anything really profound there, but I'm not saying there's not. But anyway, so, but you asked me about like, how will it change our work, the tools that we yeah. use? Will it make us obsolete? Uh, will it just be a handy alternative to, uh, to Stack Overflow? Uh, or, you know, and I said, somewhere in between those two things in ways that are probably hard for me to foresee. But let me tell you, like how it's been going for me lately, because I do think it's moved into territory that's more than the, for me, it's already moved into territory that's more than the improved stack overflow. Yeah. So the thing I was, that I've been trying to learn is fine tuning. So take a language model, maybe a smaller language model that has quite generic training. So it already knows language you know and those english and so on but and then train it to do something specific something that mm -hmm. you might need a much higher level language model to do if you just throw a prompt at it but you yeah. know it's it's just inefficient to do everything that way so i mean learning to do this and there is a whole lot of learning right there's just so much and for me to even just throw, do a little prototype, do a little experiment. And um, so I'm not very good in Python. I could bone up on Python, but then there's a hundred uh, you know, frameworks, including the ones specifically for training 
these AIs. Now, mm -hmm. I could spend months, you know, grindingly learning Python, learning the various frameworks involved. But what I'm finding is that <coughs> I can go to ChatGPT and a few other AI tools, and I can get more than just advice about this specific thing or whatever. I can say, okay, now I'm trying to write a uh, script in Python that uses this framework to do this thing. My uh, data frame has this kind of um, fields in it and blah, 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 blah. And it will spew out a script with explanatory text. I take the script. I try it out. Now, I'm not just letting it do the job, but I am mostly letting it do the job because I go back mm -hmm. and I don't even try to really write the scripts by hand anymore. But what I'm finding is that my learning is much faster because I'm not constantly getting stopped by trivia. The trivia is being handled by a thing that is much more than a improved version of Stack Overflow. It's more like having a pair programmer, except it's not really like having a pair programmer either. Because a pair programmer, like a human one, would the interaction would be very different. Um, it's a new thing. And it's and I but I use this tool. I'm not collaborating with a human pair programmer, right? I'm using a tool that uh, can generate code in a language that I'm not that familiar with, but I'm getting familiar with it faster than I would have if I had to stumble my way yeah. through. And I'm able to call the right operations in a framework that I've never used before that I would have wasted a whole day just being learning to do a trivial thing, a thing that I conceptually understood already. So I'm not learning yeah. anything important, but I'm just yeah. stumbling for a day on trivialities. So it speeds me through the most boring, non-important learning stuff and lets me go much faster on the important learning and the important getting able to actually do things. So that in a couple of weeks, I covered ground that I think would have taken me months in the past. This clip was taken from my podcast, The Engineering Room with Dave Farley a monthly podcast with some of the brightest minds in software engineering. You can find full episodes on all your favourite podcast platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts and Amazon Music. Your support helps us to bring the, you these regular episodes, so please leave your positive review on your preferred podcast platform to help us to continue to grow and bring you great guests and their insights. Thank you very much for listening.